Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of React WooCommerce theme with WordPress REST API. In the previous episode, we learned about how to set up the Next.js project with the Tailwind CSS. And in this video, we are going to learn about how to set up the WordPress menu. And before we actually start displaying the products, we would like to set up our header. So I will show you how to get the data for the header from WordPress. All right. So what we're going to do is make sure that you have the headless CMS plugin active as we have explained, as we have discussed in the previous episodes. Then the next thing you do is go to appearance and then menu. And then if you already got the menus set up, that's completely fine. But for the demonstration purposes, I'd like to use the, the menus that are registered by the plugin itself, which is HCMS header menu and footer menu. So let me create a new one. So I'll call it header menu and I'm going to click on create menu. And the reason why we're using this is because we want to keep things dynamic and to be controlled from WordPress itself rather than hard coding in Word, uh, in the front end. Okay, so we've got the header menu and make sure you set that to HCMS header menu and you click on save. So you clicked on save. Similarly, create a footer menu. So I'm going to click on create menu and we'll call it footer menu, select footer menu, click on create menu, and then add a bunch of pages. You can add whatever you want. You can add posts, etc. as well. Save the menu and then make sure it is set to HCMS footer menu. So I've saved that now. And now there are a few other things that the plugin offers. For example, you can go to customize you can go to site identity and you can set up your logo over here like I've done. You can put your site title, tagline, you can set up your site icon as well from here. Uh, and then you can go to social links, you can set up your social links from here like I've done. And similarly, you can also set your copyright text from the customizer. So these are the features that the HCMS, uh, headless CMS plugin offers. And then once you've done that, uh, this plugin offers you a REST API endpoint, which would allow you to get all of this data onto the front end. So if you go over here and if you hit it, you can see that it's WP slash JSON, RAE, which is REST API endpoint, then V1, then header hyphen footer. Then you can pass the header location ID. If you are using the one that the plugin provides, then pass SCMS header, uh, menu header and SCMS menu footer. Otherwise, if you're going to use your own, for example, primary menu, then you put primary over here. So you need to set the um, ID for that particular menu. All right. Once you do that, you can see that you've got header, you've got header menu items, right? You've got footer menu items, social links, and then you also have copyright text and sidebar one, sidebar two. So sidebars is basic are basically the widgets. So if you go to the backend again, and if you click on widgets, you can see you've got two widgets available, add CMS footer and then add CMS footer one and footer two. So whatever you put over here, that data is going to be available in the REST API like this one. And then you can use that on the front end. All right. So that's how you basically get the data from the REST API. Uh, now, one thing you'll notice that the URL that it shows over here for each of these menu items is actually the backend URL and we don't want that. The reason why we don't want that is because we are going to be working on to our decoupled front-end application. So it should be the front-end URL, not backend URL. So if user clicks on uh, this menu item, it's going to take the user to the backend URL, which is not right. So how do we fix that? Well, it's an easy fix. What you can do is you can go to settings, general, and then over here you have site address URL. It says enter the address here if you want your site homepage to be different from your WordPress installation directory. So what I can do is whatever your website is, uh, in this case, since I'm working locally, it'll be localhost, but if it's coditech.com. In fact, a lot of people ask me what should be the front end website in a decoupled architecture and what will be the back end website? Well, the best thing I can suggest is that you can keep the front end URL as your main domain, which is, for example, coditech.com, and the backend uh, can be subdomain, which is 
wordpress.qualitech.com or my demo or whatever you want to keep for that matter so in my case when i'm deploying the site live that's when i'll probably put this but for local purposes development purposes uh, i'll just use localhost so localhost let me just check what is the address localhost 3000 so i'm just going to put that here right make sure you remove the trailing slash and then just save it once you save it you're going to see some magic if you go back here notice the url how it would change refresh there you go voila so you've got the localhost url now everywhere and it's just takes care of its on its own right so you don't have to worry about it now that is brilliant so i hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and do follow me on twitter my twitter handle is koritech and do follow me on github as well my github handle is imran h sayed and thanks to all the beautiful 989 followers we are very close to crossing 1k and i would appreciate your support of following me on github as well so in the next video we'll continue further about getting this data onto a front-end next.js woocommerce website all right so i'm going to see you in the next video thank you very much bye bye